periods, menstruation. It can be a bit of a taboo subject, but maybe not anymore. Earlier this year, Radio Leeds reporter Tracy G revealed that there were some schoolgirls in West Yorkshire truanting because they couldn't afford sanitary wear. It's become known as period poverty. So what's being done to help them? Tracy's been to find out. These are the images that you usually see of periods in the media. But for some girls, this is the reality. I wrapped a sock around my underwear, you know, just to stop the bleeding. I'm a reporter for Radio Leeds, and earlier this year I spoke to some girls in Leeds who were missing school when it was their period. I started taking time off school because I didn't know, like, what was actually going on with my body and that. The story struck a nerve. It went viral and got a label. Period poverty represents nothing less than the affected women being robbed of their human dignity. Since I spoke to those two young girls, there's certainly been an emotional reaction to what they had to say. So now I want to find out what's been changing practically for girls and young women who are tackling period poverty. How much money are we really talking about here? OK, you could pay nearly three pounds for top of the range, but there are much cheaper options. So we really are talking pence here. Look, a packet of sanitary towels for 28 pence a packet. Eight pence more, you can get an entire loaf of bread. And look at this, for 24 pence, a can of baked beans. The question is, what's more important, sanitary products or food? For some people, hearing what happened to those schoolgirls stirred memories. Sarah was a young mother of four with a controlling drug addict partner. I couldn't afford the food, let alone sanitary products. I used to have to cut nappies up and stick them in my knickers and use them because you had to use something and sometimes toilet roll bunched up. It was horrible. So the cheapest packet of sanitary towels on the market, it's below 30 pence. Could you really not afford 30 pence for a packet of sanitary towels? Well, it's the cheapest loaf of bread, about 30 pence as well, isn't it? And when you've got four kids, Four mouths to feed, what you're going to do? You're going to spend your last 30 pence on a packet of cheap sanitary towels, or you're going to buy them some bread for some toast for the breakfast. How did you feel then at that point when you were using things like nappies? Worthless and angry, really, that I couldn't afford to look after myself that way. I've only just found out that period poverty existed. Even though you yourself I, went through it for it, years. But I didn't know it had a name and that people were still suffering it today. Something that's emerged from our previous coverage, there's an alarming lack of research to show the extent of the problem. A Bristol-based charity has studied period poverty across the southwest. There's half a million people in the UK who access food banks last year, and we know that there is a link between uh, food poverty and period poverty, but we haven't been able to kind of prove that statistically. We talked to over 45 women, about 50% of those were regularly struggling to afford sanitary products. Chloe's most recent work has looked at young people's attitudes to periods. They know what a period is in terms of the biology, but actually the social side of it was something that um, kind of how it impacts on your life was something it was much harder to get young people to talk about. Young people at Leeds City College were part of this research. I wanted to hear what they think. Women feel embarrassed to talk about it in front of guys because you're taught from a very young age, this is a girl-only subject, guys do not belong here. For the bulk of it, we all sat in the same room and spoke about like reproduction and that type of thing. But then when it came to actually talking about periods and things, the, all the guys just got split out of the room, let the girls have the conversation, and then we were brought back in and just been like, right, that's that over with, you don't need to know. Do you think period poverty exists? Yeah, definitely. It still does. Yes? Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Why just do you because, say that? Because, I mean, the I mean, first starters are expensive. Like, tampons are expensive. <laughs> Breaking this issue out into the open provoked a massive public response. One supermarket put out a basket so that customers could donate. After the original piece that we saw, it really just touched on my heartstrings. So just had the idea, set up a donation station. It's been, been emptied sort of fortnightly and it's just getting filled all the time. It's fantastic. Suppliers and retailers have given to stocking up food banks. 
This charity takes surplus food and hands it out to people in need. They now also hand out tampons. A lot of the products go to schools, so we just put them on the van with the breakfast cereal and deliver them at the same time. Our national depot has had plenty of offers of sanitary products rather than it just being a localised thing. It's now, it's been taken up across the UK. But is this something to leave to charity? We've counted three petitions to Parliament calling for free sanitary products for young girls from low incomes. They're already piloting this in Scotland and individual schools and colleges are also doing something about it. At Leeds City College, they're paying for free sanitary products for low-income students out of their learner support fund. We've got um, high levels of um, students who come from some of the most deprived postcodes in the country. That's nearly 50% of our students. Um, the students themselves came up with the name Feminine Freedom. Girls who don't have to worry about where their sanitary protection is coming from. It's been claimed that having periods could cost a woman £18,000, but that includes chocolate and pain relief. We've gone back to basics and calculated how much it really costs. We've worked out that it would be about 37 and a half years-ish that a woman would have a period. Obviously, every woman's different. So that means 450 periods in your lifetime. You might use 20 towels a month, yeah, which is probably fair, isn't it? That's 9,000 sanitary pads or tampons that you'd go through. These ones, because mm -hmm. we've picked out an average mm -hmm. price one, will be four pence. We've added this up to £360, which doesn't sound a lot. A lot of women can afford it, but it's the women that can't afford it and the girls who can't afford it. I think that's the, the whole issue the, the, of period poverty. Campaigner Tina has been working with a charity that sent reusable towels to Africa. The coverage back in March sent her in a new direction. It's been amazing that we've actually brought period poverty and not just in the UK but worldwide into the forefront. Four political parties in the UK have now pledged to tackle period poverty. I will allocate 10 million from our departmental budget to end the scandal of period poverty in our schools. There's pressure on the government to do the same. Schools already have discretion over how they can use their funding if they want to make sanitary products available to disadvantaged students. It's also about making sure that parents understand two things. One, they need to play their role in educating their own children, but also, separately, the very clear-cut duty that parents have to make sure that their children are attending school and complying with the law to do so. Six months ago, two schoolgirls bravely spoke out. This weekend, campaigners assemble. For the first time ever, there's a period poverty summit in the UK, and it's right here in Leeds. Today is about a collaboration, it's about working together. We have to get people talking about period poverty. It's out there, it exists. People really get why women are in period poverty, whereas before it was just such a taboo subject that nobody talked about, people talk about it now.